What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day and uh, staying strong and staying encouraged during these times. Um, I just want to talk to you guys real quickly about um, Matthew chapter 24, um, something that we should all really pay attention to and think about, um, especially in these last days, because Jesus is coming back soon. So I definitely want to read you guys, read this whole chapter to you guys real quickly and talk a little bit about it and uh, go from there. Specifically, um, in Matthew chapter 24, the disciples were trying to figure out, was trying to figure out when uh, the signs of the time would come. And also, in other words, the end times and try to, and they were trying to also figure out when Jesus was um, returning. And so it's very vital for us to understand that during these particular times and in general, that we have to not worry necessarily about the time. We need to worry about being ready, being prepared for Jesus' return. Because we don't know the day or the time that he's going to that he's going to come back, but we do know that we need to be prepared and be ready for his return. How can you be ready? How can you be prepared? We can be prepared by getting into the Word of God, growing in our relationship with Him. Most importantly, surrendering our lives to Him and being saved. Since being saved is critical. Believing in Jesus Christ, believing in Jesus Christ, so that you may and have eternal life. Believing in Jesus Christ. John 3.16 lets us know, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It starts there with believing in Jesus Christ. And as we believe in Jesus Christ and grow in our relationship with Christ, what happens is, is that we have uh, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And this comes the point in time where it's critical. And these times, wait, are we waiting on the return of Jesus, where we have to be prepared, getting to the word of God, growing in our relationship with Jesus Christ, so that and so that we can learn to be more and more like him and help others and witness and preach the gospel of Jesus to all the world, because that's what the Bible lets us know to do. And that's what we need to do while we're here waiting. We must be prepared. And while we're waiting and being prepared, we've got to stay busy. Being on mission. Focus on purpose for God. What is your purpose in this life? What has God called you to do? Have you sought God about it? It's important for you to seek God about what his will is for your life. Jesus said it himself. He said, not my will, but your will be done. He was telling God to let your will be done because he knows what's best, why it is best, when it is best for us, and how it is best for us because he's God. He has the power. He has the, he has the world in his hands. He created you. He created me. And it's critical and it's imperative and it's important that we stay locked in on him because without him, we are nothing. We are absolutely nothing nothing i want to get into the scripture real quickly and uh and i hope this encourages you guys for sure matthew chapter 24 24 verse 1 as jesus was leaving the temple grounds his disciples pointed out to him the uh the various temple buildings but he responded do you see all these buildings i tell you the truth they will be completely demolished not one stone will be left on top of another Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. This was previously uh, prophesied by Zechariah in Zechariah 14, verse 4. His disciples came to him privately and said, tell us when will all this happen? What sign will your signal will signal your return and, and the end of the world? Jesus told him, don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. There's so many times where the, we're going to find this, in, especially in the, in, the, in the end times, and because these are the last days, and we're going to find this more and more, especially in the end times, well, specifically throughout this time, the last days, that people are going to confess 
that they are Messiah, that they're God, and they're not. And we have to keep our minds open to the truth and not allow little things to get into our heart, not allow certain people to get into our lives that does not mean us any good because the enemy will try to send people into your life to try to come at you and to try to confuse you. And the fact of the matter is, is that the enemy is the author of confusion. He's the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. The enemy is the author of confusion. So we have to keep our minds open and put on the whole armor of God and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. These are the last days. These are things that's going to happen in the last days. And we're seeing some of this stuff happen now. And so it's very critical that we understand that we have to be prepared. Back to it. Verse 7. Nation will go to war against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. A famine going on now. And earthquakes in many parts of the world. But this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. Many people are all around this world are, are being persecuted and beaten and being killed for being followers of Jesus. We may not be we may not be persecuted from uh, to that capacity, but we will be. Christians will be. Christians are being persecuted all over this world right now. People, per, people are being Christians are being persecuted. Maybe they being they're being mocked by others who are unbelievers. People, there's some Christian, there's some Christians that are, um, you know, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that are dealing with a lawsuit or some sort or some crazy had happened because they didn't, um, you know, uh, it was like a homosexual couple uh, wanted a wanted a wedding a cake or something like that, and that business owner did not. Um, want to, that didn't want to make that particular cake, and so they uh, that was a situation that happened with that. So things like that is going to happen. We have to understand that we, as the body of Christ, is going to be persecuted, and we have to remember that it's not humans that we're fighting against. We're fighting against the enemy. It's a spiritual warfare against the enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, evil spirits spiritual wickedness in high places and it's important for us to be aware and be strong and be sober and be vigilant being sober is being aware being vigilant is being aware being diligent it's very important for us to open up our eyes and understand what's going on and recognize that these are the last days back to it Verse, verse 10, and many will turn away from me and betray each other. This is happening now. People are betraying each other now. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many. That's happening now and it's been happening. Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. You can't watch anything. We cannot watch anything on TV without pretty much being pretty much nudity everywhere cussing everywhere homosexual acts everywhere um axed um so many sinful things that are being that are happening that's contradicting the word of god it's happening on tv happening in movies happening on netflix happening in on, on in the radio things we listen to we have to be careful with what our eyes listen to what our ears listen to what we say what we think because what happens is, is that we if we allow the things that we see to get into our heart what happens is it will come out and we, we will do we will follow those same actions and they will totally contradict the word of God. And as a result, it stops us from moving forward and doing what God has called us to do in the first place. And that is to go into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus. And we have to do our part. We can't, we can't look at the speck in someone else's eye if we have a log in our own. So we have to work on our soul, own soul salvation and do it with fear and trembling, and help others and help each other as a result 
So it's important for us to be careful with what we watch, what we hear, what we listen to, and what we say. Because God already knows our heart. He already knows what we're thinking before we even think it. He knows what we're going to do before we do it. Psalms chapter 139 lets us know that. And so it's very important for us to be careful with the things that we see. And so many people's, the love of many is waxed and cold. Maybe they started out um, believing in Jesus Christ, but they allowed the things of this world to get to them and to cause them to uh, negate or totally deny Jesus. And it's our job to, number one, pray for him, encourage them, inform them and witness to them and let them know. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus let us know that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except in me. He's the only way. Jesus is the only way to God. The only way. Not Muhammad. Not Buddha. Not people. Not your pastor. Jesus. Believe in Jesus Christ. Verse 13, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. So during these tough times, during the times to come, the only one that will endure to those who are strong in the Lord will endure to those who are strong in the Lord will be saved. There'll be many people, I'm sure, that, are, that, have, that, that have been Christians at the beginning and they allow this stuff to scare them and they allow people of the persecution to stop them from seeking God like they should. That's why it's important and it's pivotal. Jesus is letting us know that those who endure to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole of the world so that all nations will hear it and then the end will come. The day is coming when you will see the see what Daniel the prophet spoke about, the sacrilegious object uh, that causes desecration, standing in the rich. When he's standing in the holy place, reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person on the on the deck of a roof must must not go down into the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. It's just stuff that's happening, going to happen in the in the end at the end of days. How terrible it would be for pregnant women and nursing one of the mothers in those days and pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on the Sabbath for there will be greater anguish than any time since the world began and it and it will never be so great again in fact unless that time of calamity is short not a single person will survive but it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones then if anyone tells you look here is Messiah or there he is don't believe it for false messiahs, false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive. People are going to say that they are God. People are going to say that they're Jesus. And there's only one. There's only one. Don't be deceived. He's letting us know ahead of time. As he says in verse 25, see, I have warned you about this ahead of time. And then you and then here we go. So he's talking about the second coming. There's a difference between the rapture and the second coming. The second, the rapture, the angels are going to come down and get his people. The rapture lets us know that he's going to send his angels to get his people. So many times, I've, I've, I hear this all the time when someone dies, somebody says, I hear people say this all the time, they were sent into heaven, but the fact of the matter is they're not. They're sent to the grave. Because the Bible lets us know in First Thessalonians chapter 4, I believe verse 15 through 17, it lets us know that the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And so it's very important for us to be careful with these sayings because we have to know what we're talking about. We don't want to mislead people by the things that we say or simply some people just didn't know. So if someone tells you, look. The Messiah is out in the desert. Don't bother to go and look or look. He is hiding here. Don't believe it for the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west. So it will be the it will be when the son of man causes just as the gathering of vultures 
shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. These signs will let us know that the end is near. Again, we don't know when it's going to happen, but it shows us signs that the end is near. Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened. The moon will give no light. The stars will fly from the, will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. 